Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cardiology Lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist. I have been in practice at the Texas Medical Center for more than 30 years and today we are going to look at the mitral valve area calculation using cardiac catheterization data. So, let us begin. A little bit about uh, hydraulics. When a water pipe is connected to a hose and the hose is opened, based on the pressure that is uh, generated in the water system, the water is pushed which creates the flow of water and the flow of water is based on the area of the pipe and the velocity at which it is coming through the faucet. As long as the area, the pressure and the velocity are maintained constant, the flow in the water pipe will be constant. However, let us say if you were to pinch the water pipe and create a little narrowing here. When you create a narrowing in a water pipe by pinching it, now we are introducing certain variables known as a pressure gradient. The pressure proximal to the narrowing is going to be higher than the pressure beyond the narrowing. Similarly, the velocity of the flow increases before the narrowing compared to the segment after the narrowing. As a result, uh, we have change in pressure and gradient. However, in a real human situation where we are trying to calculate the area, now we can use this principle of pressure gradient or a velocity gradient across a narrowing to calculate the valve area. In the cardiac catheterization lab, we use the pressure gradient which can be easily measured using catheters in the left ventricular cavity and also in the left atrium or indirectly by measuring the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. The formula we use for calculating the mitral valve area is simply mitral valve flow divided by a constant which is 38 multiplied by the square root of the pressure gradient across the mitral valve. Let us look at some of these uh, parameters. If there is a narrowing in the mitral valve, we are going to see a higher pressure in the left atrium compared to the left ventricular end diastolic pressure. We measure the left atrial pressure indirectly by using a Swan-Ganz catheter from the right heart which measures the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. We can calculate the mitral valve flow indirectly by calculating the cardiac output first. Cardiac output is basically stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate expressed as liters per minute or which is expressed as so many milliliters per minute. Since cardiac output is expressed as 4 liters or 5 liters per minute, we multiply that by 1000 to give us 4000 or 5000 milliliters per minute. However, the mitral flow is only when the mitral valve is open. During ventricular systole, the mitral valve is closed, so there is actually no flow across the mitral valve. So, we take this cardiac output and find out how much was flowing through the mitral valve. In order to find out that, we calculate another parameter that is the diastolic filling period. Let us look at the next slide which explains better. As we can see here, as the left ventricular pressure comes down during diastole, the mitral valve opens and there is a flow across the mitral valve and it is during this period where there is flow across the mitral valve and during systole there is no flow across the mitral valve. So, we want to calculate the number of seconds during a minute at which time there is actually flow across the mitral valve or stenotic mitral valve. So, let us get back to the formula again here. The amount of time taken by each cardiac cycle is called the diastolic filling time. So, the diastolic filling time multiplied by heart rate gives us the diastolic filling period. Here is an expanded version of a pulmonary capillary wedge pressure superimposed on a left ventricular and end diastolic pressure 
and this is a pressure difference between the left ventricle and the left atrium. We take a mean of all these pressure differences and use that as the mean gradient across the mitral valve. Again going back to the formula, mitral valve area is calculated based on mitral valve flow divided by 38 times the mean gradient where 38 is a constant. We talked about these steps, the cardiac output has to be converted into milliliters by multiplying it by 1000. So, this is the formula that is used in the cardiac catheterization lab to calculate the mitral valve area. Here we have a cardiac output of 4.6 liters per minute or 4600 ml per minute. Let us assume the heart rate is 75. So, each cardiac cycle is 800 milliseconds. Let us assume the diastolic filling time is approximately 500 milliseconds or 0 0.5 seconds. So, the diastolic uh, filling period, it should be DFP, the diastolic filling period will be 500 multiplied by 75 which is 37.5 seconds per minute. Now, the mitral valve flow is equal to 4600 divided by 37.5 which is 122.66. So, the mitral valve area is 122.66 divided by 38 multiplied by a square root of 16 millimeters of a gradient across the mitral valve. That gives a mitral valve area of 0 0.81 centimeters square. Let us look at a different example. Here, we have a much lower cardiac output of much lower cardiac output of 3.6 liters per minute. We keeping all the rest of the parameters the same the heart rate and the, the mitral valve diastolic filling period. So, the mitral valve flow is uh, 96 that divided by the same formula with the same pressure gradient of uh, 16 millimeters of mercury that gives a critical mitral valve area of 0 0.6 2 centimeter. Let us look at one more example here. We have a cardiac output of 5200 ml per minute, heart rate is 75 and a mitral gradient of approximately 9 millimeters of mercury that gives us a valve area of 1.21 centimeters per square. We can also calculate the mitral valve area using 2D echocardiography using the velocity technique. We can use the mitral valve velocity to calculate the mitral valve area. The normal mitral valve area is uh, between 4 to 6 centimeters square. If the mitral valve area is less than 1, it is considered a severe mitral stenosis. If the mitral valve area is uh, between 1 and 1.5 centimeters square, it is moderate mitral stenosis. Anything between 1.5 and 2.5 is considered a mild mitral stenosis and anything above 2.5 is uh, within normal range. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, in a nutshell about uh, how to calculate a mitral valve area during a cardiac uh, catheterization. I hope this has been useful to you and we will see you next time. I am Dr. Nick Nickham and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.